we have a, a unique uh, convergence going on in the, uh, the West today uh, that goes back historically one side or the other of it uh, to the time of Islam. As an example, the cannons that brought down the walls of Constantinople and allowed the Islam to spread out of Asia came from France. There was no concept that, yeah, we're going to make money from this, but eventually these cannons are going to be used against us. So you have uh, uh, the European desire, and there's something inherent about the European nature up to at least this point of seeing money above philosophy. You know, we have the people that say all war is caused by religion. There was never a European war that had anything to do with religion. It was all about trade. It was about territory. It was about money. So we take a look at the situation. I'm going to do this side of it first, that, that, this particular side, and then the other side of the convergence. But we take a look at, at, at Saudi Arabia, and we take a look at the tremendous amount of money that comes out of Saudi Arabia, and the fact that billionaires row uh, in, in London, England, which used to be, is now all the homes are all owned by Saudis and Qataris, and we look at downtown Manhattan and how much of the real estate is owned by the Saudis, and how much of the five-star hotels and, are owned, and the, and the tallest building in the world is about to go up in Saudi Arabia. That is all from our money, and with money comes influence. When people have influence, you cannot call out the problems with what it is. So let's just take a look at a little bit of history. First attack on the World Trade Center, Sunni Muslim. 9-11, Sunni Muslim. Fort Hood, Sunni Muslim. San Bernardino, Sunni Muslim. The bus attacks in London, Sunni Muslim. Pan Am, Sunni Muslim. The attacks in uh, Germany, Sunni Muslim. The Paris attacks, Sunni Muslim. Uh, bombings of Indonesian aircraft, Sunni Muslim. Oh, Saudi Arabia is Sunni. Therefore, our real problem is the Shia Crescent. We have to destroy the Shia Crescent and we have to support our Sunni allies, which is Saudi Arabia. We have to destroy the Shia. So, and after all, Iran is the greatest exporter of terror in the world. The last Shia attack against the West was the Marine Barracks in 1983 in Beirut, Lebanon, and it was a military target. The Sunnis, which are Hamas in the south of Israel, out of Gaza, they attack civilian targets. The Shia, which are Hezbollah in the north, only attack military targets because their view of their religion, that is the way they, they believe. So we have this skewed view because of the, the wealth of Saudi Arabia and the Saudi Arabian influence. 90% of the mosques in the United States use Saudi Arabian literature, which is misogynistic, racist, and anti-democratic. Uh, uh, we have a, an academy here in, in, in Virginia where I live, in which one of the, the top graduates of the, of the school was accused of plotting to, th to kill the President of the United States, where um, you know it, it's taught that uh, democracy is an apostate uh, a uh, religion. And so we have that side of the convergence, the money that brings this in, the tremendous number of male students out of Qatar and Saudi Arabia and the other Gulf states that come to the United States and other Western European nations to get wives. Because remember, there's a tremendous shortage of women in those countries because of polygamy. You have the top 10% of the wealthiest men have four wives, that's 40% of the women gone. You have the next 10% have two to three wives, that's another 20 to 30% on. More than 50% of the men in Saudi Arabia Arabia can never marry unless they go out for jihad. And, and that has been the driving force, by the way, of Islam that nobody understands. The polygamy is the driving force because you have all these young men that can never, ever, ever have a woman unless they go get one by either buying them or by force, which is the reason that a thousand years ago there were raids on the Irish coast in order to, to, to capture women and bring them one. So that's one side of the convergence of Islam coming in. Then you have these liberal utopianists who have this concept that, oh, what's really bad is Judeo-Christian and having Judeo-Christians in the majority, and all we need to do in order to eliminate the influence of, of Judeo-Christian concept is to mix all the religions together and have this, this kind of a strange equality. So we'll import as many Muslims as we can and, and uh, uh, into our country and 
and, and they will overcome the view. Well, now you have a situation in Germany where more people go to mosques than go to churches because it wasn't Judeo-Christian other than the stream of morality. And as long as people were swimming down that stream, everything was okay. Francis Schaeffer mentions this in his works. But now you have this conglomeration of people and it ceases to be a, a stream and it turns into a pond and the pond gets fouled by its, uh, its own waste and it becomes destructive. And that's what the utopian planners have managed to get out of this. They haven't managed to get change. They haven't managed to make society better. What they have managed to do is to turn in a stream, a river of morality, and to, to turn it into a toxic pond that is, is burning itself up.